road story I'm most known for. It doesn't involve ECW, but, you know, it's, it's the one I'm most known for. Um, my, I, I had met a girl a few years ago, you know, back in 01, 02, when I first started going to Japan, and it literally took four years of me going over there for her to finally come over to my hotel room after a tour, you know, after a show and spend the night with me. Because we had been talking back and forth through email, blah, blah, blah. So we did a show in, um, at uh, Corgan Hall one night, and we had a three days off. So she was going to come back after Corgan Hall and um, spend the night with me and stay those three days. So the first night she comes, we finally hook up, we finally have sex. And, you know, as I said before, she was very westernized for a Japanese girl, which means she's American style. She wasn't very bushy down there like most of them are. She had the little boy panties, very sexy. Um, we had sex, you know, wake up the next morning, we start having sex again, I start hitting it from behind, and as I go to pull out, as we finish, this woman starts gushing blood out from between her legs, like, um, you know, I'm not talking like dribbling, I'm talking like poltergeist gushing all over my leg, down hers, on the sheets, on the wall beside it, because, you know, the wall was right next to the bed, she starts screaming, I start freaking the hell out, because this woman's gushing blood. Uh, like you're turned on a faucet. She grabs the pillow, puts it between her legs, runs in the bathroom, and she stays in there for like 30-some minutes. I'm like knocking on the door trying to see if she's okay. She finally wants me to go down to the, um, we're in Rapongi. She wants me to go down to the convenience store and get her some uh, tampons, maxi pads, whatever the hell they had down there. So I run downstairs. I get them. I bring them back up. She opens the door just enough for her hand to come out. She snatches them. She stays in there for like another 15, 20 minutes. Finally, she comes out, and, you know, all the towels, the sheets that were that was in the bathroom, they're all bloody. It looked like somebody had died, and they had been gutted open. So I, like, gather them up, and she lays down, and she's, you know, really drained. She's really give out, and I'm trying to talk to her um, about, you know, what's wrong with her, and she, she won't really answer me. She's just sitting there. So by that time, Carino comes and knocks on the door and asks me if I want to go get something to eat. She says, yeah, go get something. I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. I said, well, here's my room key. If you need to go get anything, you know, go get something. If not, I'll be back in a little bit. So on the way down, I'm telling Carino the story. Over dinner, I'm telling him, you know, finishing telling him. As we're walking back after dinner, I had taken the sheets and all the pillowcases and everything and put them outside my hotel room for the guy to get them to clean the rooms. As we're walking back up, he's standing there with one of the sheets in his hand and has this holy shit look on his face, this little bitty Japanese guy. Um, so we get to, we get to the door. I knock on the door, and if anybody's been to Japan, you know how small the hotel rooms are. I knock on the door. There's no answer. I knock on the door again. There's no answer. Karina looks at me and goes, well, "Maybe she's dead." I'm like, "Dude, don't fucking say that." So I knock on the door again. I hear rumbling, and it takes her forever to get to the door. Finally, she opens the door, and I see her head peep out. And she goes, "Sorry, lost too much." And when she says that, she passes out in my arms, like. You know, in the movies, she she's literally lifeless. Her head's back, her arms are back, her legs are down, and I'm holding this woman in my hands, and Carino starts freaking out. I get in the room, I lay her down on the bed. Carino never comes all the way in the bedroom. He says he never wanted to be a full accomplice to this murder. He was just going to be partial. So all I could see was like half of him. I start slapping her around to trying to get her to wake up. I can't feel her pulse. She's pale white. She won't wake up. I said, holy shit, I have killed this damn woman. So I'm shaking her. She won't wake up. I said, Steve, what are we going to do? He's thinking about calling Otani because he thinks Otani's had to bury a body before in his lifetime. So she finally wakes back up just a little bit, and she looks at me and passes right back out. Again, I can't get her pulse. I don't know what's going on. I'm starting to freak out because I haven't been in Japan in a while. So when I come back, the first thing I do is kill a little Japanese woman. Well, my suitcase is huge from all the stuff I had to carry. So I start throwing stuff out of my suitcase. Steve says, what the hell are you doing? I said, we're going to take this bitch, we're going to put her in my suitcase, and we're going to take her down to Rapunga and dump her out in the street. I am not spending the rest of my life in Japan in prison for over this, over this woman. She finally comes back, too, and she says, she again, she lost too much blood. That's all she keeps saying. She passes back out. Karina says, look, when I was in California at the pay-per-view and I cut myself too deep, orange juice helped get my blood count back up. So we run downstairs, get orange juice, bring it back up. When she, I come back, she's still out. I'm having to slap her in the face hard to get this woman to wake up. She finally wakes up a little bit. I open her mouth and make her drink this orange juice. And I ask her, I said, were well, you a virgin when we had sex? She tells me in her best Japanese, no. 
Um, but she wasn't. Again, she goes right back out. So Karina says, all right, man, I'm out of here. So she leaves me in the room with this young woman not knowing if she's dead or not. So I'm laying there having to slap her and wake her up like every hour to give her orange juice. And I stayed in the bed with her. Like, I didn't sleep. I'm looking at her and, you know, not not going to sleep while she's sitting there finally starting to come back around. For three days, it was like that. I would have never leave the room. I'd get Karina to get food for us, and she'd stay in that bed. She never got out of bed for three days. It took her three days for her to start coming back around. And after about the third day that she was going to be all right, she started waking up. It was time for her to catch the bullet train back to where she's living. I literally shuttled her down and almost put my foot in her ass to get her on that bullet train because I said, if I can get her on this train, she has no more concerns with me. So <laughs> once, I get her, once I get her on the train, because uh, she was talking to me, she, like, she said she wanted to kiss me goodbye and all this. I'm like, the hell with this, get your ass on this train. After about six months, I finally hear from her, and the translation that I got from her was, she had some kind of aneurysm down in her pussy. Oh, 